G'day YouTube, my name's Lance. Welcome to Bundy Bear's Shed. Well, the weather report, warmer than Biloela. <laughs> this morning, um, I, I, I had my phone set, because we went away to the Queensland Heritage Rally over the weekend, I, I had my phone set to the Biloela temperature. So in Biloela this morning, it's 0.8 degrees, feels like minus 4.9 or something like that. But in Bundaberg, we have six degrees. So. Six degrees is cold for us, um, uh, but 23, it'll be 23 through the day, so nice and clear and sunny, so um, yeah, lovely weather, lovely time of year. But um, out at Billa Wheeler, we, we went out to the Queensland Heritage Rally, and yeah, you wouldn't believe it. I've <laughs> I had, uh, we were at the, we had a Queensland tractor spare, it's just a tent up and we took a heap of camping chairs and we weren't there to sell parts, we were there just to chat to people and have a yarn. And we took six camping chairs, so um, when you come along to the Queensland Tractor Spears gazebo, you could just sit down and chat. And yeah, you chat about, and people you hadn't seen for years. And um, <coughs> I mean, we just had a yarn with them and, and met new people and people that you sort of half knew before, we sat and chatted. So spent quite a few days chatting and <laughs> You might notice my voice is um, it's not not as normal, but I think <laughs> I think me talkometer is about bugging. And if anyone that knows me, they know I'm good at having a chat. So <laughs> I've, um, I'm nearly talked out. Um, but look, it was a great weekend. And next to our tent, our little gazebo. Uh, look, I, I think I got a photo somewhere. I, I, I didn't have the camera out an awful lot over the weekend. You just get busy and um, everyone seems to know me and, and you're wandering around and you go for a look at a tractor and oh, g'day, and you have a quick chat to this one or a quick chat to that one and, and away you go. So, so I sort of, I got some stuff, um, but um, we'll just see how that goes. Um, I'll probably tack a little bit on the end and, and find out um, what I've got. I haven't even had a chance to have a look yet. But um, we had the Harry Ferguson Tractor Club stand next to us and um, we didn't have a lot of club members roll in. Um, and the funny thing is with, um, with clubs and that, because the Harry Ferguson Tractor Club is based in Victoria, um, in Australia, um, a few of our members up our area, they say, oh, there's nothing on to go to and all that. So we thought we'd advertise it in the Fergie talk in the magazine and all that, you know, come and say good day and have a bit of a get together. But, um, yeah, uh, there wasn't a great turn up for Fergie Club members, but a lot of people that come into the shop that knew us come along, um, people that recognise us from Bundy Bear's Shed come for a chat, and I've got a few phone numbers for bits and pieces of tractors and implements and things like that that are available. Um, yeah, come and have a look, and yeah, you know, I've got a 1949 TEA, and I've got a this and a that, and it's for sale, and <laughs> so... I've got a notebook with a few notes in it and um, a couple of the younger members and other people I know that are closer to the area where the tractors are, I've given them the note and said, you know, have, have a go there. So, um, so between the stubby coolers, the, the drink coolers for um, the Harry Ferguson Tractor Club that were for sale and we had Bundy Bears Shed ones and Queensland Tractor Spares, but we didn't actually put them out for sale because we just wait until someone we knew or someone was talking about it, we'd just give them one sort of thing. But um, when I packed up and went up to the bar for the presentation dinner on the Saturday night, I forgot a stubby cooler. Dopey prick. But anyway, so I ended up buying a Queensland Heritage Rally one. And look, that's a nice looking cooler. Gave them a couple of bucks, 10 bucks. So I helped them out a little bit further. Um, <laughs> because I couldn't drink beer that was going warm. I might have to drink them fast and keep them cool. <laughs> but um, look, it was a great weekend. Um, we went over there on the Thursday. Um, we packed up on Wednesday, had the tractor all ready on the trailer Wednesday night. And Thursday morning we got away quite early. And oh, well, it wasn't that early, probably seven o'clock. And um, yeah, we got up to Billa Wheeler, which is around a three and a half hour drive north of us. and. We got there and, and Chris come from the uh, president of the Fergie Club, Chris Bowman, um, he come from the other direction and we both got to Billa Wheeler within, it must have been 20 minutes of each other. So um, we spent a bit of time setting up and having a yarn and 
all that sort of thing. So, um, but that day on the Thursday, oh, there was a southwester breeze come through and it was bloody cold. And um, so on the Queensland tractor spares marquee, we've got walls, so we put a couple of walls up and just to, just to protect us from the wind, really. But the show was Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and um, Friday the wind died off a lot and it was beautiful. Um, just a lovely day. Saturday was the same. Sunday um, was sort of pack-up day. Um, we, we hung around because I thought, oh, yeah, it's a half a day show and the gate was open, but we hung around for a few hours, but look, by around 11, 11.30, um, we had packed up and we were heading home. And we got home about, oh, half past three, four o'clock yesterday afternoon. So it gave me time to get the tractor off. Um, the tractor's still outside. I've got to give it a wash before I put him back to bed. Um, just get the dust off, you know, even though you're not doing much. Um, yeah, it gets the dust off him. Um, Chris, he, um, I gave him the tractor for the grand parades and he did the grand parades and I shot off and tried to film him. The, the first day, on the Friday, the grand parade was a bit hit and miss and I was in the wrong place and um, I missed half the cars and then the trucks didn't get going. <laughs> it was a bit of a schmozzle, but on the Saturday, um, I'd worked out what was going on and where a place would be. So I went around the other side where they were coming to me and I could sort of pan with them a little bit to give you a look at them. And it was a very long grand parade. It was a beauty. So this week, well, I'm hoping this week sometime I can put that footage together as a separate video and, um, yeah, just have the grand parade of the Queensland Heritage Rally 2024. So we'll try and get that out. I got the drone up early one morning. Um, in Australia, with the drones, you're not allowed to have them within 100 metres of people. And um, so I popped the drone up. Oh, it was a bit of a laugh first up. I popped the drone up and this hawk saw it. And the hawk comes for it, so I was sort of dodged him and he'd, he'd come down and he'd come around and he'd come under it and up over it and he was pestering the drone a bit and so there was quite a few hawks out there like um, we were sitting chatting and um, you could look around and you could often see three or four big hawks flying around so um, so yeah I didn't leave the drone up there because if we got a hit by a hawk um, we'd either hurt the hawk and damage it and break its wings or some bloody thing from the blades or um, or a thousand dollar drone had hit the deck and probably land on someone's nice shiny bonnet. <laughs> that, that wouldn't be good either. <coughs> I don't mean. So I ended up just putting the drone down low and just walking along behind it a bit. And um, yeah, well, I, I got no idea what the footage is like. Um, I'll, I'll see. Um, my mate Davey Rocket Reco, he took a case over. Um, with a side plough and um, Alan Gaston from Bundy took an old Ford Sinep over and it had a side plough as well so um, I've got a bit of footage I, I went over when they were ploughing and um, I got them to line up so um, there was one like Dave would come through then um, Alan would come behind him so you got two side plough tractors ploughing along together so I, I got a bit of footage of that I might tack on the end here of the stew and um, Dave was, and, and you'd get them together, and then Dave was going a bit faster, just, you know, he was just going a happy plough and pace, and, and he was going a bit faster, so you'd start them off together, then Dave would sort of pull away from the Fords, and, and then they'd go around the other side and he'd wait. And, but anyway, look, that's, I, I think that will be interesting footage um, of side plows. Like, you, you just don't see that sort of thing. But um, there was a lot of gear there. Um, the fellas from um, Bitterston with the Bulldogs, man, didn't they bring some tractors? Um, someone was saying, no, I didn't see it, but um, a fellow was telling me they brought him in on a road train. And, um, but I didn't, I didn't see that at all. Um, we were next to the Fordson Tractor Club of Australia. And um, yeah, we've, Queensland Tractor Spares, we've sponsored their, um, sponsor that, helped with the club expenses for years. And it was good to have them next door. So, um, yeah, it worked okay. Um, they had some nice little tractors there. Um, hopefully we can get them up to our rally in Bundaberg in August next year, August 2025. So, um, 
Yeah, we chatted to a few people about our rally and it's all positive. Um, yeah, it should be good. Um, Queensland Tractor Spares, we sponsored the tractor pull, um, the, the whole tractor pull. Like you could buy a section, a horsepower section, but we, we took on the lot. And um, so at the, at the presentation rally, I had to hop up and um, do the trophy presentations to the um, to the recipients and um, the Serena boys. Geez, they got some. Um, they they took a lot home. <laughs> they they did well. And um, talking to them the next morning, um, I was having a look at the I was having a look at the um, Bill of Wheeler tractor pull sled and, and Craig. Um, who I know well, he said, oh, it's a pretty old sled. So I thought, oh, I'll have a look at that because, um, you know, our club hasn't got one. And if it is, we've got to get one from another club and a bit of gin and around. And I thought, oh, it can't be that bloody hard. <laughs> and so anyway, I was having a look at that and taking a few photos of how they worked it. And it's a truck chassis with a diff and you know, a drive shaft going up to a winch and a weight and all that sort of thing. So. Um, so I had a look at that and um, I was just looking at that and a uh, fellow from Serena come in for a yarn and um, showed me some um, some footage of theirs and, and they've got a few sleds but um, they've got one built on a Fergie 35, they had a spare tractor and, and the Fergie, th well I suppose I should explain to those who don't know, when you have a tractor pull sled you have the, the tractor pulling and the further it goes the weight comes up further forward and puts more pressure on a pad that's running on the ground so it makes it harder and harder to pull and then once that pull's done there's usually a tractor at the other end and they hook on and they pull the sled back and they they have a winch and a brake and they let the weight down gently and um, yeah they they have to pull the sled back so the next tractor can hop on and have a bit of a scrap and go from there so but they were showing me a video of a little sled they've made with a Fergie 35 at the back of it and it's sort of built under the 35 and they use the the back wheels of the 35 and the PDO shaft and that gives you your ground speed for the weight and um, yeah they showed us they were setting it up for a four-wheel drive I saw a little video of that then the same sled they put on a big quad track John Deere and they could pull it up with the weights and um, I, I found that very interesting so um Anyway, I've had a yarn to the fellas up in Serena, and Serena's probably, I don't know, five, six hours away, something like that. And um, so when they're having the tractor pull, I've asked them to let us know. And um, yeah, Jude and I might head up there, um, take the cameras and head up, and I want to see how they've set it up, because I reckon it'll be a good thing. Um, a good thing for our area, for our club, and things like that. And um, they get a lot of work with the sled, taking it to shows, you know, agricultural shows, and they'll turn up with a sled and a few trucks, a few tractors and things like that, and they get paid to turn up by the shows and societies and things like that. So, um, look, that, that's something I'm looking at. I, I reckon I've got tractors to put on. <laughs> um, we could do that, but I, I just thought it made sense to have a tractor and have the wheels, you know, in ground speed PDO and have that run the winch and... Um, and you haven't got to have another tractor at the other end, so you haven't got to take a pull tractor to pull it backwards again. You can just have it running and just blip, back you go. So I'm just interested. I, I don't know we get around to it, but um, it's certainly worth a look. Um, it's, it's something I'd never sort of heard of before, and it pricked my ears up a bit, so we'll see. Um, <coughs> pardon me. Nearly talked out. Um, <laughs> last week before... Um, last week before we went away I got a little bit of time on the Ford 2000 out the front and um, I pulled the oil sender out and I've got a test port in there now and I had to go to the exhaust place I, I can't buy a top radiator hose for it in Australia and um, I've done the well plugs and all that as you know so I've got a, I've cut and shut a couple of radiator hoses and I've got a bit of 45 degree exhaust tube bent up um, for between the two hoses so um, and I've put glycol in it and I've changed the engine oil on it so it's got nice new engine oil in it new filter um, and I wound it over with a little hot wire wire onto the coil and I had spark but I couldn't get it running and 
Um, when I felt it, I could actually feel it blowing back through the carby a bit. And so this morning when the sun comes up, I'll go out the front, I'll pop the tappet cover off and I'm going to do a valve reset and just go from there. But I, I put an old spark plug on number one lead and I had spark. And the other thing I did when I fitted the distributor is I checked the, um, where the rotor was sitting and with the old distributor and I made sure I sat the new distributor in exactly there. But what I haven't done, like we've never heard that run, so the original distributor may have well been in the wrong position. So I found somewhere where it should be about two degrees before top dead centre, um, which seems to have retarded a bit, but that's fine. So today while I'm doing the rockers on the 2000, I'm gonna get it firing on number one and um, yeah, I'm going to get the little side plate. There's a little telltale hole on the backing plate of the flywheel where you can actually have a look and see, see how it's timed. So if I get it so I know the rockers are loose on number one, pistons up on number one, I'll just check the distributor timing because it, it may be miles out. Um, I also got the plumbing done for the fuel system and I'll show you that. Um, it's a bodged up bloody job, um, but I have used the original piping to come through past the um, um, come through past the timing cover and round the front there to keep it in narrow. Um, I still haven't got a fan belt for it, but that's neither here nor there. I can just put anything on there loosely and that'll work um, for the moment. Um, so today, when the sun comes out, I'm, I'm going to have a bit of a go at trying to get the um, Ford 2000 up and running. Um, we'll see. I, I think we should be able to do it. If I, if I can get the tappets set, um, yeah, do a, do a tappet set, check the timing on the distributor, make sure it's not blowing back through the exhaust, if, uh, through the inlet, I mean. If it is blowing back through the inlet, I haven't done a compression test on it, and I probably should. Um, I do have the gear here to do it. Um, but I noticed when I was winding it over, she was chuffing out all even, so um, yeah, I, I probably should do it. Um, but yeah, hopefully I haven't got a burnt valve or something like that, or, but I think um, I've probably just got a riding valve. And so today's exercise um, is, is try and get the little 2000 going. So once I can get that going, I'll have the camera there. If it fires up, I'll be bloody wagging my tail. <laughs> um, and if I can get it going and get it inside, well, then we can sort out what, what else needs to happen with it. So. And um, yeah, once, once I've got it running, um, it'll go and have a nice bath and we'll work out what's working and what's not working and the direction from there. And then it can come in out of the weather. And um, yeah, time's not a problem then. If I can start it and run it and move it in and out and things like that, um, that'll be fine. Um, then hopefully I'll just finish off the bonnet on the Massey Ferguson 20 and I've got a battery lead to put on. and just a couple of little fiddle tidy up jobs on the Massey 20 and the club is having a display at Agro Trend in September so I'd like to take the Massey 20 into there so that's the goal and August 24th um, yeah August 24th this year we're having a, um, a tractor run you know a, a tractor trek um, go camping for the weekend and drive our tractors 60 k's one day and 40 the next or something. So um, we'll be away for that. So, so I've just got to make sure the 35, I'm, I'm pretty sure the 135, I mean I'm pretty sure it's ready to rock and roll. Um, it went well on the weekend, like you just start and people seem to like it. A lot of people taking photos of it. One old bloke wanted to buy it off me. And how much is that worth? And I said, oh I don't know. He said, oh it'll be worth a lot of money. And I said, yeah probably mate. Yeah. And I was look around here, um, you'd get twelve to fourteen thousand for it, no worries at all, easy. Oh, it'd be worth more than that. And I said, Gee, we should sell it to this bloke. <laughs> but um, yeah, like he was, he was keen. He'd come back two or three times. And um, I said to Jude, I should just tell him fifteen grand cash. And she said, What are you going to do then? And I said, I don't know. So we didn't do that. <laughs> so <laughs> we've still got it, and we're happy to have it. Um, but anyway, we'll see. Um, yeah, I don't really want to sell gear. Um, through the week, we were looking at trailers. Um, 
my old trailer that I take everything to shows in. Um, yeah, yeah, it's 1973. I think I've mentioned it before. I got a quote from the local company, STR, and that was just for a flatbed trailer with a winch mount on the front and galvanised and two ramps out the back. And um, yeah, 16,200 and 16 and a quarter thousand anyway. And I thought, God, that's bloody dear. And um, talking to a bloke up Tyrone, and I haven't, look, I, I think they're imported. Um, Chinese, probably. Um, I wouldn't mind betting. But he's got a trailer that we don't have to have ramps on. I, I need three and a half tonne towing, so um, the, the gross trailer with a load can be three and a half tonne. And um, he's got one there with um, no ramps, just tilt, hydraulic tilt with a 12,000 pound winch on the front for a little over $10,000. And I've had a look at it. Um, oh, I've had a look online, but I'll probably go up there and have a look. And yeah, a bit over 10 grand, and that'd save buggering around with ramps and um, with a 12,000 pound winch on the front, any old dead tractors I want to bring home for parts or collecting or whatever, I could just tilt the trailer and get the 12,000 pound winch running. And um, it's got its own battery pack and its own hydraulic pack, it's hydraulic tilt. So um, I think for the money, if it's built well and it's got the heavy axles in it, um, I think that might be the go. But anyway, we're going to probably try and do that before, um, um, before the Fergie muster at Brendamere in New South Wales in March next year. So anyway, look, I'll shut up while I can still talk. <laughs> and. I'll tack a few little videos and snippets of the weekend away on. Um, I will, I may be bringing out a little video on just the ploughing, uh, for people that are interested in that alone. Um, I'll bring one out of the Grand Parade, and well, it was a great Grand Parade, and I did a bit of walking around with the camera, but um, everywhere I go, I start filming that, and it's, oh, g'day, there you go, and they start chatting, and it just doesn't work. <laughs> But anyway, there's some great, on my Facebook page, um, the, I think it was a Corindy Heritage Association, they took some great photos of the whole show and I've shared that on my private Facebook page on the Lance Masker one. Um, I've shared that out there and just shared their posts and they did a terrific job of it. So um, we've popped that out there, but um, we will have separate videos, so. Okay, thanks for dropping by. If I get the Ford 2000 going today, there'll be a little video of that. If I don't, you'll probably see a storm cloud above it. <laughs> Thunder and lightning. <laughs> and um, we'll go from it. Old Sansa the dog was that happy to see us home. She's been wandering around smiling and bloody got the tail going. And <laughs> she's all happy that we're home. Um, the daughter Adele come and stayed with us. No, it stays here and she manages the place and feeds the chooks and the ducks and um, looks after the sense of the dog and all that sort of thing. But old Sansa, you, you come home and she's right by your side and whatever you're doing. And this morning, um, when I sit at the end of the table there and I have a cuppa, well, she knows when I pop the hat on, it's time to go. So you pop the hat on and she's out the bloody door. <laughs> We've got this doggy door that the flap opens up, but she's nearly getting too fat to get out through it. But anyway, <laughs> like her owner. Anyway, all right, I'll shut up. Thanks for dropping by. Um, stay tuned for some little videos at the end here, and we'll catch you all next week, eh? See ya.
Okay. Looks like a lot of blood, boy. Okay, a bit of thicker oil probably, eh? Well, I wouldn't mind getting it right up to operating temperature and um, see if the ring's free up and that. It's fairly low on compression, but anyway, we'll go with that for the moment, eh?